Those of us who, who have seen war in and, and, and all its brutality and horror, it, uh, it changes your life forever. It just changes your life forever. The true horror of war. For 90 years, the American Friends Service Committee has worked to heal the wounds of war, to uphold human dignity, and to raise hopes for a more just and peaceful world. Guided by our belief in the worth of every person, and by our conviction that love and peaceful action can transform the world, we respond to suffering and injustice and we work to address the conditions that lead to violence and war. I went to Vietnam in 1968, and, and uh, my job description was to train these Vietnamese in the art of prosthetics and orthotics. And I was part of uh, a rehabilitation team. There were times when we worked in the in the emergency room and casualties were just coming in. Just one after the other, one after the other. Anger. Just incredible anger at, at, at how cruel human beings can be to each other and uh, you feel so helpless and that's that's a lot of the frustration you just you know you're not God even to this day 30 years later I still have dreams never goes away From Alabama, Sergeant Aubrey D. Bell, 33 years old. Technical Sergeant Bruce E. Brown, 32 years old. Private First Class John Eli Brown, 21 years old. You have to show the human face of an issue to people, um, to both engage them, but also help them understand the big picture. When I first left Iraq, I was contacted by uh, AFSC. They were searching for uh, names of Iraqi civilians, casualties, to be used in this project. 17 members of the family of Abu Sarhan, ages unknown. We knew there was so much that the public did not know. And one of the things they did not know is how many Iraqis were being killed, and with the uh, Pentagon outlawing photos of flag-draped coffins, it seemed clear that we were not going to know the whole death toll, the whole destruction. What's happening in Iraq now is not a war and occupation that went wrong. And that's why we are living this uh, period of horrible consequences. What we are living now is the consequences of war and occupation. This is how war and occupation look like. I hope that this Memorial Day will not just be a vacation or not just be a day to remember the dead. I hope it will be a day to remind us all of the importance to take action to stop this war. During the whole Eyes Wide Open experience, it reminded me so much of Sanctuary because 
it was, again, people in grief telling their stories in order for all of us to become more engaged in understanding of the war, the Iraq War, now the Central American War in the 80s. <laughs> I grew up in a country that was convulsed by violence from the very beginning. I don't think I have a recollection of Guatemala being a country at peace. I came to the United States in, at the end of 1984, three years after the disappearance of uh, six members of my family. Among the disappeared are my father, my stepmother, uh, one of my sisters-in-law who was uh, pregnant at the time she was detained and disappeared, my little sister who was 18 months of age, and my two oldest daughters who were 10 and 9. It took us a month to get from the Guatemalan-Mexican border to the United States. While we were in Mexico City, we went and visited the American Friends Service Committee. They gave us some clothing and more money and some food. You know, that's how we came to the United States. We lived in sanctuary for two and a half years, and I was giving talks everywhere. She was one of the most incredible, um, probably, refugees in sanctuary. Uh, because of the power of her story, because of how she was able to also help people put the whole social justice and situation together in Central America. I think of my father every day, you know, of how old he would be. Uh, would he be pleased with uh, the way I conduct my life? Um, Are my children looking for me? Um, if one day they come back, um, would they be able to forgive me for not finding them? I think of them all the time, all the time, every day of my life. And everything that I do for justice and accountability, I do it for them. As you know, the Supreme Court ruled in, on May 17, 1954, in the Brown case, that separate would never be equal, and said to school districts across the country, with all deliberate speech, you have to desegregate your schools. Blacks could choose to go to the formerly all-white schools. We came to that school that first day with my mom and our neighbor and met this throne of angry, jeering, cursing, spitting, mob of faces, calling us coon, nigger coons, and let's get our nigger, and let's get our coon, and, and being almost, I think, paralyzed with fear. They were bombed and burned to the ground in the house they lived in by the Ku Klux Klan. Bottles with uh, uh, rags in them and kerosene were found at the scene. Although it was said, you have a choice, but you were literally punished for making a choice. And it makes me look, take a second look at this country that I live in. It burned down the night before school was to start for the second semester, and Sophia and her sister 
borrowed clothes, dressed, and showed up in school the next morning. The service committee was able to help them uh, buy some land, uh, build a modest home, stay in that county. I had a colleague in the AFSC who said he believed that the job of AFSC was not only to speak truth to power and spread the light, but sometimes to turn up the heat. As a result of September 11th, immigration matters are now being seen through the guise of the war against terror. Open up, police officers. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, better known as ICE, has been conducting uh, worksite and home operations, what they call special ops. Going into people's homes, questioning people about their status. <laughs> Pienso que, que um, los agentes de migración y la policía no se están tocando el corazón para, para lastimar a los niños cuando arrestan a, la, a los hombres. Me dolió de ver a los niños sufriendo en esas circunstancias. Tal vez tenga yo que irme. Ellas no tienen interés de regresar a México, no quieren irse. No me las puedo llevar a la fuerza conmigo. No quisiera pensar, pero lo único que sí hago es, es um, disfrutar un poco más el tiempo juntos. Um, ojalá y, y hubiera otras cosas diferentes. I think um, the most useful thing we can do is work directly with communities and share with them information such as knowing what the rights are and knowing how to defend the rights. Queremos que la ley se reforme y se cambien por completo porque no hay ni ni el mejor abogado, no hay forma, no hay defensa legal que tengamos. En el último año, diría yo año y medio, el mensaje se ha masificado y ha tenido un alcance en diferentes comunidades. We have a long history of accompanying these movements. We were there with Martin Luther King. We were there with women. We were there uh, with gays and lesbians fighting for their rights. We were there with the indigenous peoples of these lands. We were there with the victims of, Japanese, of the Japanese internment camps. And we are there with the immigrant communities today. Our victories are always going to be episodic, partial, temporary maybe, but it seems like each step of the way we have advanced uh, the world a bit and made it more fair, more equitable, uh, more peaceful. We are now in the middle of the battlefield. This territory belonged to the Serbs army. Immediately from the other side of the river it was Bosnian side where the army of Bosnia and Herzegovina was. Imena i prezimena poginuli. Ja, ovo je moj Muhamed, moj muž. Imaju njegove amidžiće ovdje i famelova. Sve ovo prezime Sulejmano i što je sve jedno. Ovo su ovdje su uljić, opet jedno. Ali ima toga, ako ko hoćeš ti tako prezimena koji su nestali. Ovo je muž, rahmetan moj. To nije nestao padam srebrenice i nikad ništa za njeg ne zna. I ovo je ono. I nismo nikad ništa ni čuli, jedino jednom me nazvali prošle godine i kažu našemu pola glave i malo rebaro. Prvo je šćerka poginala 92. u Kotorcu od granate, bilo osmi razred, završila, izašli. Onda je si, 92. 25. augusta, 
sin je on in. Den štvrtý. Umro. You must know also that the factories, the schools, police, army, everything is still divided by the nationality. But the gardens is the places where they can come, freely speak about everything what they want, Serbs, Croats, Bosnians. That means that reconciliation in this garden is very big. Pa družim, družimo se, svi se družimo. Nije bitno ni na noci, ni ni na što. Mislim, družimo se, svi smo tu zajedno i skupa i... Družimo se. Tako bi poručao čitavom svijetu da bude sud lijepo, da ne ima... Da ne ima mržnje, da ne ima ubijanja, ratovo, da se to umanji. AFSC is an organization that comes in humbly, that comes in as a partner, that comes in also strategically. And we come in looking at communities, not at people needing help from outside, but people who can work with us to change their lives. I think right now it's a very historic time and very exciting time in Central Africa. And AFSC is making a commitment to be there to accompany and participate with the communities that are there. We're looking particularly at the issue of refugees, widows and orphans trying to come back home. We're looking at ways we can help restore their livelihoods so that they can define their future. Also, we're looking at the issue of sexual assault, particularly because of war. We are in the process of training counselors so that those counselors can be in villages and can provide a space for the women to come and talk and be heard. Yo creo que la esperanza si existe. Yo creo que la esperanza de un mejor mundo, de una mejor sociedad, de que los seres humanos somos capaces de sobrellevar y sobrepasar la ignorancia es posible. I'm going to see if I can paraphrase Bayard Rustin, a great Quaker. He said that God does not require us to change the conditions of men, but God does require us to try. We just wanted to help the people who were suffering. I'd do it again without, without a second thought. Because how can you refuse?